Hey guys, and how about we talk Tokyo Ghoul Season 2? So if you didn't know, I actually did a video about Season 2 Episode 1 where I kind of wrapped up Season 1 and just talked about the beginning of this, you know, Season 2. Um, so if you want to check that out, it's in one of these corners here. Just click on that, enjoy it, hopefully it'll be awesome. But anyway, I know the Season 2 has been over for a while, but I only just recently finished it, and so I thought I'd take the time now to talk about it. And considering I talked about an anime that's several years old, being Berserk, which you can also click if you want to hear about that, um, um, I feel like it's appropriate that I can talk about this one now. So first for the no spoilers part, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you know, this first segment is for you. Um, anyway, as for season 2, I enjoyed it overall, though I do think that it was worse than the first season, and I think that it has some very particular flaws. Basically, you can wrap it up in either one of two ways. Either first, it was rushed, or second, given the time that they, like, allotted themselves, they tried to cram too much into the season. That's what I think. Just the thing is, with all the characters, character development and all of the different like plot points that they tried to throw in, there could have easily been another couple episodes. Again, like season 1, season 2 was only 12 episodes long and it should have been longer or they should have like pushed more off to the side and focused on like a few key things. But instead they had this character appear and this character appear and this character do this and this character do that and you learn about this character's history and this character's history but it was like all so much and just kind of thrown in there that you didn't really get a firm grasp of anything really. At least that's how I felt. On the plus side though, because there is a plus side to that, you could just flip it around and say there was character development going on, there were new interesting characters that were introduced, new plot points were brought up, so I mean it's kind of double-edged I guess. Like it was cool seeing the things that we got to see, but they could have done more, they should have done more, they should have taken more time to do the things that they sought out to do in the first place. And yeah. So now to move on to the spoiler section where you use like specific names and stuff. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you should probably click off this video now. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you and have a nice day. On the other hand, if you're fine with the spoilers, awesome. Feel free to stay and we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. But again, this has been your warning, so don't get mad at me. So again, my focus is on things were either rushed or they tried to cram in too many things in the 12 episodes that they gave themselves. And so among these things are like Rize's dad, I assume that was Rize's dad. It was the dude that they went down into the high security prison, you know, the ghoul prison um, to rescue. And then he totally beat up Kaneki. Um, that guy. He kind of just disappeared, I thought. Maybe he did show up or they gave a reason for it, but I don't recall it. He just kind of was there. He kicked Kaneki's butt, which I didn't like. And then he was gone. So, and Mini Jason, I also forget his name, but Mini Jason, you know, like the person who was like crying and throwing a tantrum on the middle of the road, you know, um, he kind of appeared and wasn't that important, I felt. You know, he was an S rank or an SS rank, I forget which ghoul. So he's powerful and everything, and he has this connection with the big baddie of season one, but they didn't really ever exploit that to too big of an extent. Like, he showed up more than Rize's dad did, but he didn't really do anything. I mean, it could have been anyone else that did what Mini Jason did, and it would have been just the same. It was nice to see the people of Onteku fighting, you know, like the Devil Ape and whatnot, and getting those little flashes of how the manager found them and everything, but that's the thing, it was just little flashes, and so while I appreciated it for the sake of backstory and, you know, getting more in depth with the characters, I wanted to see more of that, you know? Give me, like, Naruto kind of filler if you have to, but I would like to know more about these characters that we're finally getting to see in action, instead of just that little flash. Again, I totally appreciated the Flash, but it'd be cool to have a little bit more. Like the manager, I think that's a good example. We got to see his history, we got to see like how he came to be where he was. I appreciated that. It was a good story, I felt that that was a good length. I feel like they could have done that with the others, maybe not quite as long given that there were, you know, more of them, but better than the little flashes of just showing them angry and alone. Oh, and on that note, it was really cool how that tied together with the manager's background. Flashes, they're all angry and alone, and they're like, I'll kill you if what da blah. And then, yeah, blah. now they're here and nice. That was cool. I liked that. Regarding Juzo's development and how we got to see that Shinohara was basically his family at that point, I liked the idea, but I felt that they rushed that as well because not far back in the series, we get to see that Juzo is insane, you know, with the whole killing twins thing and torturing them and all that. Juzo's still kind of insane. I liked that we got to see his history a little bit, you know, got to see why he's the way that he is, but it didn't really explain entirely to me why he had such a deep connection with Shinohara. Again, I understand it's the whole, you know, you're my first family thing, you're finally showing me compassion, you know, compared to what I experienced growing up. 
but it was just we only got to see that little bit and then we just had to run with it kind of deal it wasn't as fully fleshed out as I would have liked. And again, I think that's a matter of time where they should have taken more time with it, should have shown us more moments between Juzo and Shinohara, you know, more things like that, because then I could have appreciated more at the very end when Juzo was like fighting his hardest in order to save Shinohara from the, you know, one-eyed owl. It would have made things better, I think. Something that I liked that I actually didn't feel was too rushed was actually um, Amon and Akira. They have their little relationship going and I felt like that was kind of okay. Was it weird a little bit? Yeah was a little bit, but I felt that it was portrayed to be a little bit weird. Um, I mean, when Akira tries to kiss Amon, he covers her mouth, like he stops her. That's the kind of relationship that they have, that's the kind of people that they are. I felt like that was pretty good. Um, we, I mean, it makes sense to me how their relationship might have gone a little bit faster too, because they already kind of knew each other in a way, because you know, Amon knew Akira's father, and Akira's father, I might have forgotten his name right now, I'm sorry, um, you know, spoke a lot about Amon, they just already had that connection there. And, um, seeing the moments with them together, you know, like Akira being drunk and like saying I hate you and everything and then how he was all like remorseful and whatnot, it was, it was good to me. I appreciated that bit of romantic flair in this season. <laughs> now as far as romantic flair goes, I was so disappointed when nothing happened between Kaneki and Toka. I, I guess I'm kind of that. I'm like a mini shipper, I guess? I don't ship everyone, but there's like a cool girl in the series and a cool guy and they have good chemistry and the season is like obviously hinting at them or whatever. Yeah, I'll go with it. So to essentially wrap this up, we'll just say that things really escalated in the last few episodes and that like things were kind of fine and then suddenly on Teku and everyone in that district was they were just under attack all of the ghouls you know like all the doves had gone in um the police force i forget what they're called ccg i think they all just came in and they started killing it happened really really quickly i felt like that could have taken a little bit longer i understand that sometimes you know like that that kind of war those battles they just erupt but it was unexpected. And then the fights in there were rushed and you didn't get to see a lot of things. But with all of that breaking down, seeing that everything was kind of starting to fall apart for Anteka, for the ghouls living there, um, I wanted two things. One, I wanted to see Hide and Kaneki get back together and everything be cool. And if that couldn't happen, I wanted Kaneki and Toka to like survive together, to run away together, you know, not, you know, in a weird way, but, and neither of those things happened. And it made me so very sad. It really did. Because Hideyoshi is like the best friend a guy could ask for and he was so cool and the whole time I thought that Kaneki was bleeding, they did a good job with that. And then Toka, she just keeps running and running and running and you're like, Toka just call out to him and she never does and then Kaneki leaves and... <sighs> so that stuff was sad. As far as the novelist goes, I forgot what her name was, but the novelist lady who's all bandaged up and girly and creepy and whatnot, I don't exactly know why she turned on Teiko in. I don't know, you see throughout the season she's like gathering information on Kaneki, but I don't know why. I don't know why she decided to do that. I might have just missed something, but I can't, I can't exactly piece it together, so I don't really know. But now to really wrap this up, again, I thought that things were, I liked the season, but I thought that things were rushed or they tried to cram in too much at a time. They kept introducing characters, or characters were like revisited, that didn't really have any meaning. Um, things would happen just really quickly without much explanation or without a lot of follow through. Like at the very end with Kaneki and the Big Dove, I have to assume that Kaneki was killed because it went black and then you hear the sound of the suitcase coming out with his Kunke, you know? And that was just weird. I, I want to see that fight. I want to know what happened so I don't just have to assume that Kaneki essentially committed suicide by giving himself up to the doves. I want to know. Oh, and I, I know I said I was going to wrap this up, but touching back on Kaneki's character development really quick, I did, I thought it was good enough development. I heard a lot of complaints that there wasn't a lot of development for Kaneki. I thought it was pretty good though because of the Kakuja. I think that's what it was called. When you eat like too much you know, Quinke or whatever, and then you develop Kakuja, and you see like him struggling between his ghoul and his human side again. You know, you see him, he does doesn't want to be bad, you know, he's, he just wants to be strong in order to protect his friends and family, you know, those he cares for. I thought it was perfectly fine, so I have no complaints about Kaneki's development there, aside from that things may have been rushed. I thought that the relationships in this season were good, I just wish that they had more time to expand upon some things, and that's really, that's really, again, all it is. I just wish that they had more time. I wish that they had taken more time or not included so many things. 
because that just ended up being distracting and we didn't get to see the full potential, I believe, of what this season had. Still, at the very end, it showed a scene of Toka in like an empty city block or whatever, and she had a coffee shop and she flipped the sign and said, reopen, and that hints at another season. Supposedly, it's about a specific manga bit, like they're going back, I don't know if it's like retconning essentially, but either way, I will be looking forward to that, because I love Tokyo Ghoul, I think it's been a great anime. Um, and that's all I have to say. So with all that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, of course, feel free to like, comment, and if you're new, even subscribe. It means a lot, it really helps me out, and I would love to have you guys. So, tune in next time for my next video. Until then, take care. Cue outro, go!